All right, so the easiest way to do this, first thing I like to do is kind of just bring in a plane and then we'll immediately go to the shading tab. And on this plane here, to get that displacement, again, we're gonna take advantage of Octane's displacement system. I'm gonna add in a new material and then I'm gonna import in one of the displacement maps. I'm also gonna give you, there's a pack of 25 displacement maps that you guys can use for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a grayscale image just to help save a little bit on the memory. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in too. Before we do that, we're gonna bring in a displacement octane texture displacement. And then once we have that, we're gonna connect that up here into the texture input. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of the display maps. You should have it here in your JPEG. And then you can clearly see these are all the ones that we're going to be using that you guys have. So just basically load one up and have fun. I'm gonna do DR4 just for the sake of this. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And then once that's open, we're gonna change the legacy to one on the gamma there. And let's go ahead and look at what we got here. We're gonna go ahead and fire up the render. And if you look at it right now, we don't really see too much happening. Again, that's because of our height is very low. If I take this up to one, there you go. You can clearly see it. Let's go ahead and put our mid-level to 0.5. And again, one, it might be a little bit too heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down to 0.2. But so one thing I like to do before I start getting into, you know, making my structure, um, I like to go into my world settings and go ahead and bring in an environment that's kind of like, you know, to help you get your mojo going here. Obviously, this room is not going to really help. One thing I like to do is just kind of bring in this overcast day, kind of liking that something a little bit better. And then what I like to do here is go ahead and bring in my guy for reference. And there's my reference. So obviously, if we're going to be making a massive building, this is not big enough, right? So we're going to go ahead and just scale this up. What we're going to do here is jump into the modeling tab here. So I'm in edit mode. I'm actually going to tab out one more time, apply my scale, press A, apply scale, jump back into edit mode. And then all I want to do here is then you can just basically start to play. So for example, if I just go inset, come down to something like that and extrude this up, basically we've got this kind of crude build. I'm going to press control alt to select these edges, press control B. And actually matter of fact, I just want these side edges here. Let me go into tab edge mode. I'm going to select that press control alt. Again, now it just selects those edges, control B. And I'm just going to add like a bevel here. So we can just to kind of change things up. Matter of fact, I don't like what's going on down here. So I'm going to grab these guys here on the bottom. And I'm going to press X. I'm going to say dissolve edges. Come back here, control alt on the edge there, press control B. So again, this is up to you, whatever you want. But now if we go back into our render mode, and we can clearly see something's not happening with the placement, right? It's not working right. And then if you go press control A, apply scale, still not working. So what I found out, the best thing way to do this, if we go back to our shading tab and let's go back to our object, what you want to do is make sure that you have some type of projection on this. And I found out the one that works best for this situation. I come in here and I'll just press Q for me quick and I have a box projection. I'm going to grab my box projection, slap that into projection there. Then we're also going to pop out a UV transform because this is going to help us control the size. And if we fire this back up, we don't see anything happening. So we need to basically give this the, um, the projection on there. So what I'm gonna do is tab in, select the faces, press all, make sure we all press U, and then I'm just gonna go down here to Q project, okay? And then tab back out. And now you can see we got something happening. So again, let's come back in here and let's put this back to maybe one. So now you can see we have the displacement happening. Maybe even going up to three, let's go up to five. Okay, so we got a lot of dis displacement happening. Now, if you look closely, you can see it's kind of splitting in these seams here. So to get rid of those type of seams, you got to play here with the mid-level. So just kind of, you know, whatever you're up to or whatever your size of your model is, just play with that mid-level. And that's pretty much it. The rest is just up to your imagination. Again, you can just come in here, tab in to your structure. I would go to face mode. And then you just start doing do some basic extruding, you know, loop cuts, press control R. I'll get two, maybe three or four loop cuts there. Right, something like that. Let's grab this, go back to face mode. I'm gonna grab this top section here of faces. Maybe click that, for example, extrude S. And then we're just gonna scale that up. And then maybe coming back down here on this bottom one, selecting these, got this one here. Maybe I just do an extrude out. And then again, as you extrude new pieces, you notice that the displacement is not happening on here. So again, make sure you select everything, press U, Q projection and then tab out and then you should be back. And then that's pretty much the whole, you know, setup. It's nothing really complex. It's very simple. Again, like I was saying, I have only an hour. So I just wanted something to just to play with, you know, I wasn't looking to make anything crazy. It's just playing, just literally playing inside a blender. Then from there, you would just go ahead and throw in playing. 
But what I like to do instead of throwing in a plane is I like to use the default plugin that ships with it, the uh, Ant Landscape, and then just come inside of here and scale this up. And then we got some type of landscape happening. And then again, you open this up here and then just kind of play again having fun, just playing with stuff, find something that might be cool. Oh, that might actually be pretty cool, right? And then just literally, oh, I think I see dunes. I like that one, let's back up here. Here are dunes, okay, that's really cool. Mesh size, I think if I crank this up here, yeah, that gives me my size. And if you don't have this available in yours, make sure you go to edit preferences, and then it just type in literally land, L-A-N-D, and there it is, add mesh, A-N-T, landscape. You can use that to bring some type of landscape in. So that looks cool. And then again, I like to have my guy as a reference point, always quickly drop in a camera, just having fun. And again, give yourself an hour, gives yourself some type of time restraint so you're not just sitting there muddling around forever. An hour mean literally get in there, get your setup, get your stuff done, and then get out. Boom, that already looks really cool. We can add a little bit of texture on here or whatever materials you have. Normally I have a bunch of landscape materials that I get from texture.haven or lots of free sources. What I like to do also on this, you come inside of here and you'll play with the scale of your displacement map also is going to have a big effect on how massive it looks. So if we come in here and I'm just go to 0.5, let's cut that in half or eh, I think I like the other one, let's go 0.8. And one thing I like to do also while I'm on this here is come up here and we're gonna add in a dirt node. So come in here, drop in a dirt node, shift A, S, D, I, dirt texture, drop that, plug it into your albedo and then add in a color wrap or basically gradient map, drop that in here. And then we can refire that up. And to see what this is doing, play with your values. Just play with these. I've been playing with these so much that I know what each one does. So if you crank up the 10, details, radius, just play with this stuff, guys. Again, we're just playing inside of Blender. Like when you were a kid and you played, keep that same mentality. So well, since it's in the desert, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a dusty feel, something like that. And then this white, I'm gonna probably change to maybe more like a grayish dark, something more. And let's come to this other one, this other tab here that's white, and we can change the color up here. And that's the overall color of the building, something more like that. And maybe even just adding a little bit more dinginess to that. And there's our building looking super dusty, a little too dusty. So all we'll do is just come in here, come on our strength, click on that. Let's maybe just set that to three, it's something very subtle. All right, so that's how I would do that. So now maybe we wanna change our background look but i like the light that's come here i like this overcast look but maybe i want to change it to a different background it's super easy jump into your world tab and all we're going to do here is we're going to just duplicate this setup here matter of fact just duplicate the whole setup shift d duplicate it and then what we're going to do visible environment we're going to plug this texture environment right into visible environment or you can literally just come in here and go daylight planetary texture texture environment it's the same thing i'm gonna plug that into there and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna change my HDRI to something that maybe I want the background to look like. So I'm gonna go with this desert scene here, we'll use that. And then what we need to do is tell it, hey, I wanna use this as my backplate. And you come down here and check, backplate. Now if we jump back, now you can see we're using the overcast lighting, but we have a different backplate here. So again, we come down to translate. This will use to be, to use to rotate it. And boom, there it is. Now we have a whole different vibe going on. I like what I had in the first one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. What I'm gonna quickly do now is add in some fog. Let me show you how we're gonna add in some fog. Again, we need this setup here. This is our setup that we're using for our HDRI. So what I wanna do, literally all we're gonna do is come in here to medium, click on medium, and we're gonna choose a standard volume media, or you can even just use volume media. Now we're gonna jump back so we can see what's happening. So right now we don't see anything because this is at 100% density. If we take this down to zero, boom, now we can see things. I'm gonna go 0.3. Now this value will depend on your side, your scene. Play with these values. Again, like see, there's getting darker, it's getting darker, it's getting darker. These values are not set in stone. Play with them, experiment with them, okay? So we'll start right about, let's just go to five for a moment. And right now we still don't see anything happening. It's just getting darker. Our scattering needs to be white. Take our scattering, slide that up to white. 
And matter of fact, I'm gonna take my absorption and even slide that up to white. Now you can clearly see the fog is kicking in, right? So what I'm gonna do also, let's go ahead and knock this down to one. Okay, now it's super foggy. I set these to 12. Again, I've been getting some good results by setting these to 12. Set that to 12. And now we notice it's super foggy. So I'm gonna go like 0.3, even a little bit better, 0.2, maybe even a 0.03. Now to play with this fog, you also do have an option up here, medium radius. You can change this. If we change this to two, it gets dark. It gets more denser, right? Look at that. The fog is getting more heavier. So just playing with it. That's how I figured this stuff out was just by playing it. But now the next issue is I want to move the fog. I don't want the fog just to be equal. Maybe we want to move it forward or back. So from other videos that I found, typically if you come to here and click on phase, pop this open, this will allow us to move the fog. And to me, what it looks like, it might be just literally moving it forward or back. Like you can kind of slowly see, we just slowly move it. Like here, it goes from minus one to zero. And you can see it's even. And then it's going, it's going, it's going. And then I think it's going slowly back, like behind the building when you go to one. So I think this is in front and this is in back. So basically having this set up here is how we can get some type of atmosphere going inside of here. Now I'm assuming you might be able to, I haven't tried it yet, but just making it a box and hooking this same setup on it. Try it out, let me know if it works. But for right now, this is the system I've been using to get fog into my scene and it's been working out pretty well. And one last note, I wanna show you how I got the little lights inside of here, which is really fun to get these little lights going on here. So for example, let me go ahead, whenever you're not working or you don't need it, go ahead and mute the fog because it really does slow down your viewport. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute that by pressing M. Now to add like the little lights that I had on here, for example, we can click on this. Let's go to faces. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our little hut. And before we do that, I'm gonna jump in here and I'm gonna add another material in here. And I'm gonna take this material that we have right now, again, material and just load it in here. I'm gonna press the little two here so it's gonna give us a different one. And then I'm just literally gonna call this one lights. And what I'm gonna do is keep everything else on here the same, but to add the little light patterns, well, all we're going to do is Come in here to our admission and I'm going to use a black body admission because I just want to keep real world specs as far as the colors. You can use a texture admission if you want to use something that's different. And then again, I'm going to copy paste this setup here. Shift D, duplicate that down. I'm going to plug this texture into texture and then I'm going to come in here and change out the texture. And I'm going to go use one of these dot patterns that I have up here. I'm going to go to dot 01. Just load that. In. Now, again, we're already set up with the gamma of one, which is OK to go. But I'm actually going to take this press backspace to set it back to zero. OK, and then we're using 65 Kelvin on the scale there. So what I'm going to do now, let's tab out and let's go ahead and select our hut, press tab. And then, for example, I only want lights to be on this top portion here. So what I'll do is just go ahead and select that. I'm going to select the second material, the one called lights, assign it. And now we're going to have it just on that, right? It's going to be the same material, but it's going to have the little PNG light. So if we're using that black and white as a mask to show what we want to be lit. So if we jump into that here and I'm going to come in here and let me go ahead and crank up the brightness. Let's go maybe like a thousand. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and bring down my world so we can see them a little easier. And there you go. We can clearly see the little lights and obviously they're too small right now. So let's just jump back and then now you just come in here and make some adjustments on it. And then this is a little bit too small. So what I'll do is come in here and scale this up and boom, there's the little lights happening on side of there. Again, we can crank up the brightness a little bit more. Maybe go to 2000, get a little bit more brightness. We can control the Calvin. I'll maybe go to 3500 to get a little bit more amber color. And then that's basically how I added the little lights in just on that section there. So just our little quick house here. Now, if I go back and maybe let's bring back in that world lighting. And again, it's a little bit bright. So maybe we can choose something a little bit more different, a little bit more gloomy, going to, you know, some different HDRIs and really just starting to play again, playing in Blender. That was the whole objective of me just going here. Let's do something like a little bit here and see what this is looking like. 